Christmas films in general aren't known for being very good films. Every once in a while, usually a long while, we get a Christmas movie that's legitimately good. Other times, we get Christmas movies that are so bad they end up being good. But once every 200,000 years or so, in the center of this Venn diagram, we get one that seems to do the impossible and be both. And that's where I'd put Mistletones. Mistletones is a directed tv Christmas movie produced by ABC Family, which first aired during their 2012 25 Days of Christmas block, directed by Paul Owen and starring Tia Mari, Jonathan Patrick Moore, and Tori Spelling. This movie has a lot of the tropes you'd expect from an ABC slash Harmack Christmas movie, like the protagonist's late mother being a renowned Christmas caroler, a tightwad corporate boss, and a bitchy rival that's lost sight of the meaning of Christmas, and lots of musical numbers. But what I like about Mistletones is just how easily digestible it is. Clichés be damned. It gives us the softball tearjerkers and the catchy musical bits we'd expect without bogging itself down with the TV Christmas movie tropes that annoy us. The pacing of Mistletones is as slick as ice. Before we have a chance to get bored of one scene, we're whisked away to the next. This is a TV Christmas movie at Santa's sleigh speed. Top that off with genuinely good performances from the C-list cast and the energetic musical sequences, and you have a direct-to-TV Christmas movie that's actually really enjoyable, and one that you might just end up watching more than once for reasons other than making fun of it for your YouTube channel. What? And yes, this video is going to spoil the plot of Mistletones for you. But we don't exactly watch Christmas movies for their Shyamalan twists, now do we? So leave behind at least some of your preconceived judgments of an ABC Family original and let's take a look at Mistletones. Right away you'll see what I mean when I say the pacing of this movie is slick. In the first 60 seconds we see a flyer for a Snowball's Choir audition which tells us everything we needed about the setup of the film as elegantly as the opening shot in Star Wars A New Hope did. And yes, I'm comparing Mistletones to the original Star Wars. Cope, nerds. Even the cat is doing his best to get the ball rolling by sabotaging our protagonist Holly's shower. <laughs> So Holly is rushing to make her audition to be in the locally renowned Christmas caroling group, the Snowbells, which in addition to being the designated performers at the local mall during the Christmas season, recently had a slot open up due to one of their existing members kicking the bucket. Now that Ingrid's gone, may she rest in peace. So it's kind of like filling a Supreme Court seat, although possibly more important in this universe. Marcy, who fills the stereotypical Scrooge role of Mistletones, is the leader of the Snowbells, but appears to operate it more like a social clique than a caroling group. And Marcy makes it obvious that the tryouts are a political theater, and she already has her pick for the newest Snowbell member designated in her headcanon. You have a very difficult decision to make. After the auditions of a drag queen group, My Goth GF, hey! and Sarah Goldfarb, television. Holly bursts into the room at the last minute. Wait! Marcy tries to blow off Holly and dip early, but Holly stops the bells in their tracks with a head-turning, subtly auto-tuned performance. Fall on your knees. Thanks for making that decision more difficult. Alright Holly, that's enough fun. Back to the corporate rat race with you. Holly's co-worker, AJ, already knows that she just came from a Snowbells audition. You killed it. And flexes his familiarity with her situation with some office mischief. Because every time you say Snowbell, I add a paperclip to this. At the office, we're introduced to the movie's attractive Scrooge trope in the form of Holly's tight ass of a boss, Nick. Let's not worry about the holiday party right now. As well as his corporate lackey, Bernie. Happy holidays from headquarters. Nick, back to you. Holly receives a call in the middle of the meeting and expects good news. Hallelujah! But, surprising no one, it turns out to be a rejection call. You're just not Snowbell material. I hope that's not a personal call. Say something else, I dare you, you son of a bitch. Later that night, I don't understand this game. What are the rules? Oh. Ah! 
Polly decides to pursue her goal on her own terms after some divine intervention. Stupid snowbells. I should start my own group. Even if I did, it's not like they let us perform at the mall anyway. Holly confronts the mall's manager, who also happens to be working as the mall Santa, Santa, about the possibility of holding tryouts for the mall's Christmas performance, traditionally reserved for the snowbells. I don't know. I mean, every year it's the snowbells. Well, just thought I'd ask, have a night. I mean, it is just a sign out front. I could change that thing in like five minutes. Oh. Sure. We could have tryouts like that American Idol. I ate. Lit. Now Holly needs to assemble a caroling group of her own to compete in the competition she herself incepted. Okay, okay. I'll be in your group. And then they scout their other co-worker, Larry. What? The team of three corner the corporate HR lackey, Bernie, in their quest for expansion. And AJ uses his skills of sexual harassment to convince her to join their cause. Hey, Bernie. Larry? Holly? I did not just look down your shirt. Glad to hear it. The squad enters what I hope is a mixed gender bathroom and gets Bernie to audition from inside one of the stalls. Jack! The wait for it, wait for it. The halls with bows of holly. La 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 la. Hey, I told you this movie moved at an icy brisk pace. Is somebody gonna tell me why I'm caroling in the crapper? The newly assembled group devises a scheme to audition in the office's warehouse after hours. Although, I'm not sure why they didn't just do it at one of their houses, but whatever. Hey, you know we don't pay overtime, right? Rival caroling groups rehearsing independently montage. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me. Five, five golden rings. Four coming by spring. French hat, two to the thugs. And a partridge in a pear tree. To this movie's credit, The 12 Days of Christmas is objectively the worst mainstream Christmas song in existence, but they managed to make it palatable here. The two groups conclude their auditions to mixed results. That was better. That was perfect. <laughs> if you were trying to sound like a dying moose, Barb. Holly determines that the group is mis missing something. Like what? I don't know. Better moves or something. It needs to be more like a... Like a... I'll see Holly. Okay, bye. Gee, it sure would be nice if Holly had a chance encounter with fate that would lead her to her presumptive fifth member of her caroling. Karaoke night, huh? That probably won't interact with the story arc at all. Up next, it's the king of karaoke. Holy Rudolph's bright red nose. Like the sweet song of the choir. When you light my morning sky, burning love. This scene high key bangs, okay? Wow, that was impressive. Uh, just having fun, you know, doing my thing. Glad you dug it. What are you doing here? Holly tries to convince Nick to join the caroling group. And when that doesn't work at first, she employs some good old-fashioned blackmail to get what she wants. Well, the internet was invented for this. Success! Nick shows up to Holly and Friends' clandestine caroling operation and whips them into shape over the course of... Another training montage! Stand up straight! Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh. Good. Okay, let's move the plot along here. Holly and most of the Caroling gang get to know each other at the karaoke bar. I really had a whole lot to do after work since I beat Red Horizon 2. Yeah, you beat Red Horizon 2. Mm, twice. That is hot. They deliberate on a name for their group to mix success. Sled Zipling. Holly decides on a name before the group's next meeting. You called us the Mistletones. Marcy somehow has undercover footage of the Mistletones auditions and starts to consider them a threat to the Bell's caroling monopoly. Not awful enough. Holly tries to get Nick into the Christmas spirit by awkwardly singing to him after getting a ride home from him. The snow's coming down. 
I'm watching. Marcy, Marcy cuts her losses and offers Holly a spot on the snowbells. Working against each other doesn't do anyone any good. Holly feeds Nick drinks at the company holiday party until he performs karaoke. Sleigh bells ring. Holly and Nick make out in the supply closet. I'm going to need you and Holly to stop by my cube on Monday because there are some boss employee makeout forms I need you to fill out. Nick's boss offers him a job over the phone after his superior suffers a psychotic episode. Our Southeast Asia guy lost it. Like total nervous breakdown. That doesn't sound so great. And tells him he needs to literally get on a plane for Mumbai that night with just a few hours notice. Nick's our guy. Works 24-7. No family. You know, normal straight-to-TV Christmas movie stuff. And finally, Holly YOLOs and turns down Marcy's offer to be part of the Snowbells. I'm not Snowbell material, but listen, good luck tomorrow. You guys are adorable. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Finally, it's time for the mall's public tryouts for the privilege to perform on Christmas Eve. First up, it's the chest notes! I would have voted for them. This next fella's gonna put the hip hop in your holiday. It's Ludacris Gringo! White people shouldn't rap. Okay. Meanwhile, Holly's becoming increasingly distressed as the group's anchor, Nick, has yet to arrive presumably because he's off chasing his boring corporate promotion. When it becomes clear that Nick is a no-show, the Mistletones have no choice but to perform the best they can without him. Then the Snowbells show up and wipe the floor with them because they picked the best Christmas song of all time and because they have way better outfits. The Snowbells are declared the winner and Holly and her posse leave in varying levels of disgrace. When Holly gets home, her dad sits her down for the movie's obligatory emotional conversation about her deceased mother. Do you know why your mom started the Snowbells? It was so that she and her friends could have a good time singing Christmas songs. And all of those people were watching. She was singing right to you. That's all I remember of her. And she'd be okay with that. I love you, Holly. Okay, so this scene is cheesy as hell, but something about Holly cuddling up to her dad, watching old video of her mother as a founding snowbell, actually makes me feel something in my cold, black hole of a heart. Nick calls Holly to let him know why he missed the performance, and that he got the promotion. I, I, I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything, Nick. They gave me the promotion. Holly seems less than enthused. Congratulations. I really hope that you get everything you want. Holly. Goodbye, Nick. The next day, Holly's sister, Bonkers. Grace, forces Holly to come with her to the mall. Oh, come on. This is a tradition. Holly meets up with the Snowbells in their dressing room to wish them good luck on their Christmas Eve performance. What? Are you sorry that you didn't take my offer to become a bell? Or are you just plain sorry you lost? 
I just wanted to say Merry Christmas. But you, you don't tell me what to do. Fed up with Marcy's bullcrap, Holly goes outside for a smoke break. But what she sees takes her by surprise and takes us, the viewer, nowhere because this shouldn't be surprising at all. Okay, so small problem here. Disney really doesn't want me to upload the audio from the last segment of the movie. Whenever I try to upload it with any part of Nick and Holly singing Baby Please Come Home, arguably the best musical number in the movie, they block the video, even in a demonetized status. So, I guess I just have to tell you that... Nick rolls up on a float singing the same song Holly awkwardly sang to him in the car earlier, Baby Please Come Home. He tells Holly he turned the promotion down because it wasn't what he really wanted. And after a little bit of prodding, go in and sing with the guy. Convinces Holly to come up onto the float and sing with him. The snowbells roll up to see what's going on, and Marcy is upset that they're stealing her spotlight. Marcy tells Stacy, If you go up there, you're off key asses out of the bells forever. To which Stacy is like, Lighten up, Marcy. It's Christmas. And Marcy is all like, but 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 So yeah, Holly and Nick sing an amazing duet. Sorry I had to mute it, but it's definitely worth checking out the full movie to hear for yourself. Anyways, here's the rest of the original video. And yeah, that's Mistletones. Certainly not in the realm of quality of the Charlie Brown Christmas Special, Home Alone, The Polar Express, or even the Trailer Park Boys Xmas TV Special. But despite the odds, Mistletones continues to make me laugh and groove and sometimes cry, or at least well up, every time I watch it. This movie probably would have flown right past my radar typically reserved for only the most avant-garde of cinema. But my little sister encouraged me to give Mistletones a try, and I have to say she has an eye for overperforming low-budget Christmas movies. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great holiday season, or whatever. <laughs>